Welcome to Dreamers Anonymous. My name is Dr. Ernest, Dr. Maude Ernest. In my experience, I found that we're all looking for something to satisfy us. But ultimately, our desires are impractical and unsustainable. I'm here to help you understand why your goals might not be in your best interest and what you can do to change. Let's all go around and introduce ourselves. Hello, my name is Richard Corey. I'm quite rich, richer than a king, you might say. But I don't have any friends. I guess I'm here because I have everything, yet I feel so empty. Hello, old sports. I'm Gatsby, Dre Gatsby, and I'm a millionaire. My totally plausible life goal is to win back the girl I dated for a few weeks five years ago. But now she's married and has a child. And I'm, well, I'm kind of lonely. But you see, it'll all be worth it once Daisy and I run off together. Now, the only reason I'm really here is because I hid my out bootlegged alcohol here and I'm going to take it and sell it after you all leave. Hi, my name is John. I used to be a soldier, but now with my soul grown old, I'm not much of anything. I miss the old days, filled with glory and deeds. Hi, my name is Jack. I I'm on the same boat as Gatsby. I'm, I'm pretty happy with my life, but my therapist disagrees and forced me to come here. Okay, great. Let's start with you, Richard. Tell me about your life. What seems to be bothering you? Well, okay. Everyone thinks I live a perfect life. I mean, I am rich, I'm purely slim, and a gentleman from soul to crown. Everyone wishes that they were in my place, but I wish I was in theirs. I mean, everyone thinks I'm some sort of god, royal king, or celebrity. They think that just because of my wealth, I'm some ethereal being, but I'm just a human. Oh, I see. You feel alone. All you want is for those people on the pavement who whisper when you walk past to talk to you. Yes. I mean, you must understand, right, Gatsby? I mean, we're both really rich, but you don't have any friends either. Well, not technically, but you see, old sports, soon I'll have what matters most in the world. Daisy! Why are you clinging to this fantasy of this Daisy woman? Because she's... Hi, I in a white palace. She's the king's daughter, the golden girl, and her voice. Her voice is full of money. That was so long ago. Your dreams are so far gone. I mean, you can't repeat the past. Can't repeat the past? Why? Of course you can. The past is all I've got. I was a hero, a warrior in the past. I did not choose to dream. Dreams cometh on me. Some strange old lust for deeds. Seeds brought momentary life and long foot cunning. Now I've grown old and am part of the council of elders who rule and do no more battle. I flame again with might for action. Do you see how foolish your dreams are though? No matter how valiant your dreams are, you are forgetful that such might no longer cleaves to you. You will never be able to achieve the glory you attained in your past. What about me? I've achieved everything I've ever wanted. Everything anyone's ever wanted. People want to be me, so why am I still not satisfied? You aren't satisfied because your wealth and presti prestige could never fill the void in your heart. That can only be filled by people, friends, family, but your soul and don't go out of your way besides the customary interaction of hello. Exactly, that's what I'm doing, old sport. You see, I'm going to fill the void in my heart with Daisy. What's wrong with that? Don't you see that Daisy will stumble short of your dreams, not through her own fault, but because of the colossal vitality of your illusion? Just like Richard and John's dream, yours cannot possibly be fulfilled. You keep dwelling in the past, trying to force something out of nothing. You know, you could be a great man, someone with true purpose, ambition, and ultimately, satisfaction, if you just live. All three of you have these false desires for wealth, the past, that won't bring you happiness. I just don't understand your argument. I mean, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. My dream of being a toolmaker in Chicago has been pretty fulfilling. Under the smoke and hard work, I'm still laughing with white teeth. Well, this is because of one of two reasons. Perhaps, unlike Gatsby, John, and Richard, your dream is practical because it's not superficial or quixotic. You take your city, your life, and your destiny for what it is. Brutal, crooked, and wicked. Instead, and accept it, instead of trying to change it like Gatsby and John tried to do. Or perhaps your life just hasn't run its course yet. 
You're a young man, under the terrible burden of destiny, ultimately unaware that nothing gold can stay. Perhaps early leaves flower, but only so an hour. Perhaps your happiness is transient. Well, that's all the time we have. Hopefully you learn something and you can change your unhealthy lifestyles. We have a choice. We can ignore the modernist pleads and warnings and go on living shallow lives, pretending they bear some purpose. We can continue pining for, wealth, for a wealthy future or romanticized past and ignore that these will never truly bring us happiness. Or we can learn from the mistakes of these characters and embrace relationships instead of wealth, simplicity instead of ostentatiousness. Only then can we truly find happiness and satisfaction.